out of every single episode that's been out of Conquer Evolution so far, that was most understandable. I actually kind of got that because I kind of actually liked the whole idea of sentient robots. I mean, yeah, yeah, it did kind of make no sense, but it made sense in its own right. Like, if you get what I mean, you understand it. But basically, it follows these two robots. Free theoretically, because there's actually a third one in the next time period. But there's three robots. There's Mako, that's a Detective Shiva, and Type B. I can't remember the guy's name, but... Basically, and then she's trying to find Type B, but Shiba then finds Type A, which is actually Mako. So then Mako basically kind of falls in love with Shiba. That's not really understandable in its own right. That kind of confused me, but that's what I got. And then, yeah, if they're drawn together, they blow up. So that's kind of the branching point. So it kind of feels a lot like Blade Runner mixed with... It's kind of like Blade Runner mixed with Equilibrium mixed with, I think, iRobot. That's what I'm kind of getting from it, because... You had the whole thing of them feeling emotion, them actually being human, and then them being robots at the same time. So you had those three kind of overarching themes in it, and then also you find out that Shiba actually defects from his organization in the future, and so does Jiro. So then Jiro, something happens, something has to happen in between the two time periods that basically Shiba wants to kill Japan and awaken it again, apparently, and then Jiro defects from the organization of superhumans. So yeah, I mean, you have that. That's a pretty deep episode. I think, in its own right, people are actually knocking this anime too much. I don't think it's right, because this anime is actually really freaking good. Like, in its own right, it's not like it's not Bones' best work, I can understand that. But it's, it's, it's that kind of Bones anime that you can actually have to put your brain on. Because you kind of, you've watched One Punch Man, you're like, yeah, One Punch Man, yeah, yeah. But then you watch this, you're like, Okay, alright, I get you, I get you, I get what your themes are. But yeah, I mean, the themes, the actual episode, and the fact, it reminded me a lot of those kind of films. And also Automata, in a way, as well, I've ever seen the film Automata, the Spanish sentient robot film. It kind of reminded me of that as well. So you have a lot of themes in this anime, and a lot of inspirations, I would say, from different works. But in everything, it didn't feel like it was boring too much, and it kind of did its own spin, and it kind of worked in its own run. I actually really liked it. Saying that, I don't think it's I don't think it's accessible in its own right. It's not an accessible anime, to say the least. You're not gonna go out and say, "Yo, Jim, watch this effing anime." You're not because it doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna say, "Yo, Jim, you want a good anime? Watch Kongo Revolucio." You come back to you and say, "Steven, Steven, what the f do you make me watch?" You'd be like, I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry. And then basically, that's, that's how season two starts. You basically made your friend watch Conquer Revolution and his brain exploded. But yeah, I mean, in its own right, it was good. But it's not accessible good yet. I think it's beginning to realise it. I think it's beginning to realise it doesn't make much sense and the writers are understanding that. And it's kind of making it a bit, make a bit more conjurable sense. But I mean, yeah, watch it. It's good. I would say so. I'd say you have to keep your brain on, but. For the sake of Steven, keep your brain on. But with all that said, I have been the driver, and I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.